Hello, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that doesn't care how it's really pronounced, but it will always pronounce it Jalapeno. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Maki from Sideroom Games. In Maki from Cyberum Games, one player takes on the role of a resistance leader in German-occupied France. Is this World War II or the EU? World War II. The game board is a map of a French town with various locations and roads that link them together. You, of course, have things like the doctor's office, the cafe, you have a radio transmitter, you have secret spare rooms, you have all sorts of kooky kooky things are going on in this town. Now, you also have a morale tracker, which also will track the number of German soldiers that will be employed. And you also have a number of tokens that represent various uh, items that you'll need to collect and spend over the course of your uh, missions. Uh, you will have various mission cards that you'll go through and a lot of other kooky, kooky things as well. Now, the first thing you do is uh, randomly select two missions from the mission deck, and you put those missions at the top of the board. In fact, some of the mission uh, missions will be locations that will be adjacent to a road at the top of the board. Next, what you will do is place three resistance fighters in a safe house with two of them just off the board at the cafe. Now, you have a small card-sized board that has the morale tracker and the soldier, the German soldier tracker on it. Essentially, you have two kinds of enemies in this game. You have the French uh, Milice, which are the French police force that are working for the German authorities, and they are blue meeples. But then you also have the red meeples that represent the German soldiers. After you familiarize yourself with the missions, every round you're going to check your morale to essentially see how many of these enemies you're going to put out. Now, you move one of your meeples to a location, and after you move one of your meeples to a location, then you draw a card, a patrol card. The patrol card is going to say, it's going to give three locations, and it's going to say where the enemy goes. Now, if the first location is already occupied by your meeple, he's going to go to the second location. If that one's occupied, he'll go to the third location. However, if all those locations are already occupied with either your meeples or the... Um, the uh, their police or soldiers, then they're going to start arresting. They're going to go back through the line, and if they find one of your uh, meeples there, they will arrest them, and that meeple, your meeple, is permanently out of the game. But you go back and forth placing your meeples on locations and then placing the police uh, or the soldiers on their locations, their various locations around the board. Once everybody's placed, you go ahead and you take actions at the various locations. For instance, if you go to the doctor, you can get medical supplies. If you go to the grocer, you can get food. If you go to the cafe, you can spend food to recruit more, more resistance fighters to your cause. If you go to the radios, you can radio for an airdrop, and you can either have one weapon, one... Uh, money or three food dropped in one of the field areas that you can pick up on a subsequent turn. There's also a space where you can spend items in order to increase morale or gain money and decrease morale. So after you go ahead and you take care of everything that you want to take care of with the actions, you have to trace a line from your locations back to the safe house. If you are blocked by a patrol, that character is arrested, they are taken off the board, and that is permanently out of the game. Now, the maximum number of meeples you can have is five after you've recruited those two, so as you're losing those meeples, it becomes harder and harder to fulfill your objectives to get the items that you need. Now, if you do have a weapon, you do have the option to essentially spend a weapon token to kill one of the Melis, one of the blue figures. Now, if you do that, your morale is going to go down, and suddenly the soldier track is going to go up, which means the last enemy that you place is always going to be a German soldier. Now, this is important because soldiers cannot be killed. Unlike the Melis, they fire back, they, they, they can't be killed, so they're a little, little more dangerous as the game goes on. As you fulfill the missions, you're going to go ahead and put yellow cubes there to indicate that you have fulfilled that specific part, that specific requirement of the mission. Now, there are some things you're going to have to do that will require you to get new locations. Now, 
for instance, if you need explosives, there's not a place to get explosives on the board, so you have to go to one of these spare locations, but you have to spend money, so you have to collect the money in order to do that. But then you can put a location, a chemist location on there, which can turn uh, medical supplies into bombs. Um, but there's other locations, like a counterfeiter you can place on there, and another safe house you can place on there, but you can go ahead and, and do these things in order to help fulfill your mission. Now, the last phase is you remove all the patrols from the board, all the meeples, of course, so all your meeples go back to the safe house. You move the day tracker up one space. If it gets to one of the colored, the shaded uh, portions, you actually have to move the morale token down one space as well. If you kill a policeman, you actually move the morale space one down, and that, of course, lifts the, the number of soldiers that are in play. Now, there's several ways you can lose. You can lose this game if all of your meeples are arrested. You can also lose the game if you get to 15 days and you have not completed your objectives, your missions, you lose. If your morale track gets all the way down to the fail space, then you lose the game. But if you and all of your various meeples can fulfill both of your missions, then you win, Maquis. So I first heard about Maquis a few weeks ago. Um, we did our top 10, top 10 games of 2019. Um, this game's been around in print and play, I think, since about 2013, but it was just released, I think, last year as, as a, 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 an actual game you could retail by. And Han named this as his, one of his favorite games from last year. I think it was two or three. He really liked it a lot. And I was very intrigued with it. So um, I contacted the good people at uh, Sideroom Games. They sent me a copy, and I wanted to see what I thought about it. Now, I don't play a lot of solo games. I'm not, I'm not a big solo gamer, but I do every now and then. I'll play one, uh, a game by myself. And I'm usually pleasantly surprised because I think, eh, solo game, how fun can it be without other people? But usually when I play a solo game, I actually like it better than I think I will. I enjoy the experience more than I think I will. Um, and that certainly was the case with Maquis. Uh, I really enjoyed this one. First of all, I love the theme. You know I love World War II. Some of my favorite games are World War II games, and I love the history, of course. Uh, I, so I, I like that aspect. That's why I was kind of interested in it, too. I was kind of drawn to it. Um, but I really like it. It's just a fun, clever game, and there's a lot of really tough choices. How do you fulfill your objectives? Obviously, you need to go to certain certain spaces, but how do you get there? And, of course, you know you can try to chain your way there so the, the guys um, are kind of protected from, from the patrols, but then, of course, if a patrol comes out and everything's taken, they're, they're going to get arrested and they may cut off your guys, so they're, you're screwed that way, too. Um, but you just you kind of have to be smart and clever and realize when to risk it and when not to risk it, and, of course, you don't know what the cards are going to do. But there's 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 some mitigation there, too, with, with some of the missions. Like, for instance, one of the missions, you put a mole into the police station, and, and it lets you look at the top card. But it's it's scary. I mean, it's it's really a game where you're, you're kind of on your fingernails. So I played a few games um, here. I know I lost, uh, I think, the first two games I lost. The third one I won. So it's 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 hard game. Difficulty things, you can tweak the difficulty so it's easier or harder. I was just playing, on average, uh, the, the base regular game all the times. But I really liked it. I really, really like this game. For what it is, for what it does, as a solitaire game, it's quick and it's easy to learn, easy to play. There are a few, my only criticism is there are a few little rules things here and there where they were a little ambiguous, few little questions I had that I don't think were quite explained in the rule book. But again, those are few and far between. I think generally speaking, this is a really, really fun game. I really like it for what it does, and I highly recommend Maquis. If you're looking for a great, fun, relatively quick solo game, I think you will really enjoy this. Recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer is 100% buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on BoardGameGeek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer, ladies and gentlemen, and in the interests of keeping this a family-friendly show, I will not tell you how I pronounce fajitas. Please somebody help me on my feet again And I don't know where I'm going And I don't know where I've been Please somebody help me Listen, if you like this review, subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave a comment. And if you don't like it, then keep your mouth shut.